this regular meeting of the Mayor and Council of the City of LaGrange, we will begin with an invocation to be offered by Dr. W.T. Edmondson to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. May we pray. Oh, oh, eternal God, our Father, we come. We ask your blessings tonight upon this council. We ask your blessings upon our city, our state, and our nation. God, we ask that you continue to guide and direct us. And God, let us always be mindful to know that we are public servants. We're serving your people. God, we ask that we continue to listen to them, that we may serve them in a most respectful way, serve them in a way that will be pleasing to you. God, we thank you now and give us words to say, uh, a mind to do what we need to do to leave this city. And God will be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council members have all been given a copy of the minutes of our regular council meeting held on March the 22nd, as well, if you, I'm gonna hold that for a second, as well as the council retreat minutes for March 25th and 26th. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Okay. I have a motion second to approve the minutes of both the meeting and the retreat. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. That passes unanimously. Under public hearings, we are here tonight to receive comments on UDO text amendments regarding industrial parking ratio requirements. Ms. Kelsey. Yes, sir. This um, public hearing was properly advertised. At this time, we would take any comments. Is there anybody in council chambers who would like to comment on these UDO text amendments? Okay. Seeing none, I will declare that public hearing closed and we will move to delegations. We have Michelle Bettingfield with Harmony House. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I've got some pictures to show you, if I may. Sure, you may approach. Uh, to save ink and be safe with our trees, I only printed out like three little sections, so don't mind sharing. Three sections so as I go, but um, one, I just want to give you an update on Harmony House, tell you what we've been doing, and I think we skipped last year, so this might be a two-year consolidated report, but uh, not much has changed. We made it through COVID, and we made it through COVID successfully with um, the opportunity to do some, some renovations. So um, the pictures that you're looking at, the one of them shows just what one of the bedrooms looks like. I think there's a photo of the baby room to begin with. Um, we were able to upgrade with some donations from different communities and different people. We have um, the bedrooms that have been updated. One of them shows a package on the bed. That's what all the beds look like as a client get ready, gets ready to come into their house. There's going to be a stack of towels, maybe some books, depending on the age of the children. There will be a bag of books there that um, either um, Gail Gordon and Success by Six or the Girl Scouts have donated, just depending on what age of the kid is. and. Um, so they're just, it's, it's a room, it's not cinder brick walls, and that's the point I wanted to show you guys on that one. As you go further into it, you'll see the kitchen was renovated. It used to be that 1970s wood paneling, and we have beautiful paneling now. And we also have some new granite top on the, um, it's a black and gray, a little bit more modern than the laminate we used to have. So, um, so lots of good stuff has been happening in there. While doing all this, we also found out that we had a little bit of a black mold issue. Um, and we had some termites going on over there. So I don't know if any of y'all have ever treated black mold or termites, but it's not fun. Um, but with um, continued grants that we have written and received, we were able to take care of all the repairs, and there's just photos of the repairs as they were going along. Um, the, under the, there's a one picture that has a lot of water sitting on the driveway. The water was actually seeping under the house from there. So um, kudos to a um, actually, there's an exterminating company here that was exterminating, and in the process, they found the black mold under the house and a lot of other stuff, and they did an amazing job of, um, of taking care of it. So, just wanted to give you an update on that. In the process, we were able to do some regrading and sodding in the backyard and put some beautiful grass down and a little retaining walls and fix some stuff to kind of keep that from happening again. But that's a quick shelter itself update. 
if y'all have any questions now, I'll pause and then I'll go in just to some stats and numbers for you. Anything on those? All right. Um, just to let you know, our crisis calls, just to give you a comparison, before COVID hit, in 2018, we had 155 residents. 19, we had 106. Um, and in 20, we actually only brought 49 into the residence itself, but we have other ways of housing them and providing safety from them in other locations. So um, as a whole, we had over 150 that we served and provided shelter for, just not actually in the shelter for COVID reasons. Um, and then I'll tell you in 2021, we we're back up to 93. So um, as, a, as a total, everything that we've done, um, in 2021, we had 942 crisis calls. That was up by about 400 from the year before. So people wanna say, how did COVID impact us? During COVID, our crisis numbers went down. We were down in four, 500 and 600 crisis calls a year in 20 and 21. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, 19 and 20. Back to 21, it kicked back up again at the end, and we've had almost 1,000 crisis calls again. Do you know why the numbers went down? And y'all do have a recall? They couldn't call. You're, you're quarantined with your abuser. You don't have a way to get to your friend's house, your neighbor's house, or your work, or there was just no way for them to call. So um, they would call while they're at work, and they were quick, and they were short, and they were sweet, or we may have had someone else calling to say, hey, my friend is going through this. How can I help her? And it was that type of stuff. Um, but we're back up, and so far this year, we've had, per comparing this quarter to the last couple years quarters, it was more than we've had before. So um, since we opened the doors, we have had over 17,252 crisis calls. Um, we've served right at 6,000, uh, 16,000 residents um, since 2006. We also do non-sheltering, so they don't have to actually come into the shelter to get our services. For non-sheltering uh, clients, we've served 1,114. Um, and then we, in 2012, we started serving sexual assault victims or adding that to our questionnaire. And you know, we, didn't, we didn't know to ask that question before 2012. We didn't think, I, I don't know why, but um, 2012, we became a sexual assault advocate for adults in Troop County. And since then, we've done over 200 sexual assault cases that we've actually came in contact with. So, um, so we are there and we are making a difference. Um, let me see. That was really a lot of the stats and stuff. I mean, it, I just, I want to come in for you guys and ask y'all if y'all had any questions. I think, all, I didn't give you the rundown of what Harmony House does. I think all of you already know, but you know, we're a domestic violence shelter. We're a sexual assault advocates. We have the community outreach, which is for people that don't need to come into the shelter itself. They just need our services before and after. We assist with protective orders. We assist with um, reloading, relocating them. On the relocation piece, um, Normally we budget about 12,000 per year between relocation and 12,000 a year on cl um, client um, rental, as like assistant, housing assistance type stuff. So it's 25,000, give or take, you know, for, for both of those combined. Just last year alone, we went 50,000 on those. And that was a lot of hotels. I'm not gonna lie to you. A majority of them were hotels just for, for safety and just finding a way to house them so that they can stay safe in their space without being exposed to everyone else and keeping um, good news out of it was I didn't have a single shelter person person that contracted COVID and I think that's I don't know how many businesses can say that um, and I only had one in my outreach program and she actually she quarantined because her husband had it and that was it so I think that's some pretty strong well, we appreciate we appreciate you coming and updating us um, those are certainly impressive stats in terms of the work you've done um, we, we certainly hate that the need is there for your services but we're glad that given that the need is in the community um, for uh, to assist victims of domestic violence that we have such a wonderful resource um, in our community I do think we all uh, are familiar generally with the work that you do and uh, and we also know that your your uh, program has been recognized on the state level as being one of the, the best examples that we have of what what's done with to uh, to assist victims of domestic violence. So thank you for your commitment to that. Do any council members have any questions or I, I comments? Do, I, I do. Um, just remind us about. Do you know about what average stay uh, a family would have at your facility? The average last well last year it's a little bit different but the average time that we're actually staying in touch with them on a direct is about 54 55 days um then it starts tapering off a little bit but then we have some that go in our community outreach program and we stay in touch with them for a year or two um, i have one that i touch base with once a quarter 
and I've had her for four or five years now. Um, so yeah, active in the shelter going is about 54, 55 days. Um, Michelle, do y'all get involved at all with human trafficking? We do. Actually, we, um, I'm actually a trainer for um, human trafficking and do, do some of the trainings um, for hotel management to recognize. Um, it's a tough one. It is going on, and we, we, I think a lot of people recognize it as a certain, what you see on TV and on social media and stuff. Um, but it's happening here in different ways, different approaches is how it happens. Um, but yes, actually it's... it's, it's how do y'all you all become aware of that? Uh, could you kind of lead us through a, a situation and what you would do to help? I guess once you start helping them, it's probably the same services that you would give to somebody of domestic violence. It is a lot of the same services. Um, the hotels are really good at partnering with us around here if they notice it. Um, this, through the trainings that we've been able to do, um, there's certain signs they can look for, like they never leave their room or they're always ordering in food or just different ways that they recognize it. And then we just either casually slide a number under the door or we'll have a way just to get in touch with them um, without giving too much detail, but we have a way and they contact us. So once mm -hmm. we can get them into where we are um, and, pr and assure that they're gonna be safe, we get them as safe as we can, fed, clothed, cleaned up. They're welcome to stay with us, but a lot of times they want to relocate out of town and back to either where their children might be or um, to, there's a couple places around the Atlanta area called Gateway and a couple of other ones that we partner with that are a little bit more in tune with the trafficking piece. But it is, it is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's unfortunate, it is yeah. real. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, actually I can tell you we've had one this week already and it just breaks my heart. So good news is collaborations between three different agencies, I mean four different agencies, um, two county agencies, two city agencies, we worked together that um, the person that was trafficking her was arrested. He had 12 outstanding warrants, so he was arrested, and um, and she's safe right now. So that was a good success case for this week. So, but thank you guys for what y'all do. Y'all believed in us from day one. Um, I think it was Mayor Lucan at the time, and then you've stepped in and have not skipped a beat as well. And I just appreciate the support of every single one of you. I know, Dr. Gore, you were with us many of years through your wife and yeah and she she Martin. a lot more than me she, she, <laughs> she did a lot to help y'all in the beginning I, I think everyone's i mean i can look around the room and every one of y'all have been involved in some way shape or form whether it's supporting us at events um speaking of events we'll see y'all all at the dragon boat race right <laughs> july 16th all right thank, thank you are Michelle. there any other questions no thank right. you appreciate thank you. appreciate your work um we also under delegations have uh, mr theron truitt mr. truitt if you'd like to come forward Hello, how you doing? Good, good. good. All right. Before I get started, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about myself and who I am. My name is Theron Truett. I'm from LaGrange, Georgia. I've lived here all my life, and I'm 46 years old. And I started a business uh, in 2001 on 206 East Depot Street in LaGrange. And it started out as a car dealer. Uh, got a car dealer's license. The building just way too big, so we just used the building as much as we could. To, utilize the space to try to make more businesses and income. And I came here about a month ago to speak and didn't know I had to be on the agenda. So when I did get a chance to speak, I was kind of upset and I felt as if I was being targeted. And I just like, the police was constantly, constantly harassing my business. And a lot of has happened since then. And some feelings have changed since then, but just to sum it up and all, I got arrested when I first opened before I ever opened. I got arrested for nine counts of adult entertainment and one count of uh, sale of alcohol without a license based on someone else's social media. And when I started this business, I went through the city of LaGrange. I done everything that they told me to do and I asked all the right questions. And, and I was saying, well, okay, I'm starting events and I'm gonna rent this building out. People can have a good time and use it for whatever events they want, they said, yes, that's what you're able to do. And they gave me the go ahead on everything. I, I got city license, I had state license, and and just all hell broke loose, honestly, man. And uh, basically how it started, it just got accused of something that she done, and and I was told that, you know, I was not supposed to have a business. Like, I'm like, they signed off on it three weeks ago. And I came and I was a little bitter, but 
now I I just went through the motion and I I met with the chief of police and I met with the city manager and we come up with some things that could probably help you know younger businesses, black businesses, and people who don't know any better before the fact instead of after the fact. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are getting licensed and we don't actually understand. And I think that's more or less our problem because of negligence of not knowing, but with the intentions of doing the right thing. So in between there, you know, I'm like, uh, I was going to court for like 15 months and they finally dismissed the charges Monday. And when they did dismiss the charges, I had a lawyer, I had to hire an attorney, and they were still threatening to charge me with more charges from something that happened. And I'm like, well, if that's what you're gonna do, I'm still not gonna plead guilty because I didn't do anything wrong. So they never did pick me up for any of that stuff, but just been threatening, threatening, threatening. The police are constantly parking outside my business entity and they just turn the lights on and they sit there like they're just waiting for something to happen. And I've been there, like I said, 15 months, no incidents, nothing's happened. And I was absent one weekend. I wasn't there and they just they just come at a certain time and say, hey, it's walk up to the door. You know you're supposed to close at a certain time. It's like to keep picking, keep jigging. But besides all that, like I said, we talked to the chief and we come up with something that was gonna work that was for us. And then when I had the meeting with the chief, also the city uh, manager, Ms. Kelsey right here, I come to realize what the actual problem is. The problem wasn't the police. The problem wasn't what we was doing. The problem is just basically saying that they're operating on the ordinance and the ordinance is the issue. That's what I've come to, that the city ordinance for hours of operation. And I've been trying to do all the research I can to figure out what's what. And in Georgia, they don't have a designated hours of operation. It's designed by the council members and everybody that, I don't know who votes for it, but I know you guys get to vote. And what I want to know now is that when I started, I had zero rules, and they come up with every rule in the world since then. Because when I asked them, do they have any rules for an event center, they had zero rules. But since then, in order for people to drink at an event center, they had to have either a brown bagging license or a liquor license. So I just did everything they asked me to do. Then once I got the liquor license, they turned me into a bar and grill, but my state license says an event center. And I have attorneys, I have several people that's willing to come out and talk to these kids. Sometimes when we have kids night, they say we can't have a kids night unless it's a paid event, a ticket event with the live performer. And that's basically how we do it. And sum it up, we're trying to get these kids here so that once we got them all in one place, these people are going to talk to them, advise them of how to act when the police stops them. Uh, what are their rights? I mean, just trying to help them become better young adults. And it seems like every time we do something, we get met with the police instead of someone like uh, the Chamber of Counters or somebody trying to help us out. And we're just getting so tired of dealing with that issue. And it's just redundant. And the only thing that I could come up with is the hours of operation is the problem. And I was looking and doing some homework on that, and they gave me a sheet that they were saying that <clears throat> these operation ordinances was changed in 2015, which is seven years ago. And the market has changed. People have changed. The revenue has changed. And the workforce is not the same. And I'm sure we're going to have a thousand more problems yet to come here as LaGrange is growing. And I wanted to know what could we do or uh, are there any stipulations? I'm not gonna sit up here and just say the police are bad because they're not all bad. They give they give breaks also. I don't want to bash anybody. I just want to find out what can we do as business owners to become better business owners and find a way that we can operate operate on the law but still have some type of leeway, some type of something that's just going to give you a chance to do a little bit more than the next people because right now everybody's fighting for the same business yeah so we we have talked before and and i think it it might be this is a good reminder we've talked about the fact that sometimes the ordinances and the regulations are complicated and they they pull from different places sometimes they pull from the zoning code sometimes they pull from the alcohol code sometimes they pull from the just the general city business code 
And so, you know, to the extent that that can be simplified and put into a, uh, a framework that's easy to understand, I do think that's something that probably we ought to be working on and we ought to be working for every business to have a, to, to simplify and have, have one, one sort of uh, piece of information that every business owner can be, you know, can be uh, familiar with. Um, it sounds like to some extent that's already happened with your conversation with the city manager and the city attorney. Maybe some more needs to be done. I think that if you, if you would like to make a specific request um, to the mayor and council to, to adjust any of the ordinance, we probably, need, we probably need to ask the staff to do a detailed breakdown of what the operating rules are now in terms of time and depends on which type of license and depends on what the closing time, opening time. Some of that set by state law. For example, you can't open before 12:30 on Sunday because mm -hmm. that's a state law rule. You know, so I mean, there's there's some rules that are set by state. Others, the council has discretion on. So maybe uh, if we could get the staff to put together what those current rules are and share those with Mr. Truitt, and then if he has some in particular that you think ought to be adjusted and maybe compare what what we normally do is we compare what other cities do as well like That's we look what at someone told me. we look at Noonan we look at Columbia Carrollton. Carrollton Griffin we look at similar size cities and see what are they doing to see are we are we in line are we out of line are we more restrictive less restrictive that sort of thing that's normally what the staff does so what I'd like to do is ask the staff to do a deep dive into that you've probably already done some of that already well, we've kind but of put together the pamphlet that we Okay. To Mr. Truitt about Mark um, was kind enough to put that together and we had a graphic artist come in and kind of fancy it up a little bit so we're in the final stages of editing that document so that we can get that out to, to, business, new, to businesses. new businesses when someone comes in and buys a business license, license yeah, yeah. So, we, so we're working on that from informational standpoint so. but then if we can if we, we can, can do, do a deep dive into operations. the specific operations and and get Mr. Truitt's input in terms of what you know what changes might might be requested then we can put that on a future council agenda That's for the I council wanted, yeah. yeah how and is that when you put it on a future council agenda? so we would normally we would put that on a work session at 11 o'clock work session that's um, what they told me earlier today yeah. you have to probably sign up for a work session right and so so that because what what we do is we we rely very much on our staff to to do the you know to do these kind of to do the homework and put put these details together and then they would Miss Kelsey or her staff would present that at a future work session um, and then the council can take a, a deep dive into it and see if there's a change we want to make you know I mean like we did that this morning we had a work session this morning where we talked about goats eating grass I mean I'm, I, I mean I'm, I'm not I'm not kidding I mean we had we had a discussion about people wanting to you know bring goats into the city and fencing and all that so so we we normally put those on the morning session when we have an opportunity to go into more detail with it so that that would be my recommendation but we'll we'll uh miss kelsey can can move forward with that with that conversation okay and, and then well, i got one more thing i yeah. want to ask you before i go when you say on you guys are looking to that work session yep it's just something that you guys only decide or is it voted on by the communities or what it's only voted on by the council so, so or, ordinances are ordinances are determined. These are these are the gentlemen. They are all gentlemen. These are the gentlemen that are elected to m pass laws for the city of Lagrange. And so, the council members vote on the ordinance. But um, but certainly anybody in the community is welcome to provide input for that process. But it's not voted on by the community. It's voted on by the city council. And just because it goes in front of the work session doesn't mean it comes in front of the city council. It's the same group. Same group. It's the same group. Yeah. It's the same. It's the, the work. The work session is the six of us. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what I want to know because yeah. we have so many issues with the ordinance. I figured if they was to revise the ordinance or at least take a look at it, because just looking at the dates that they gave me, it was changed periodically from 15 back to 12 back to 1990. So. Yeah. Yeah, so the way, the way the ordinance process works is the, the work session is really for the benefit of the staff to be able to go into some detail in their presentation to the council. And then once the staff makes that detailed presentation, 
then the council gives direction to the city attorney to prepare an ordinance that says A, B, or C, whatever the ordinance might say. And then that ordinance then gets put on a meeting agenda for a 530 agenda meeting um, for a first reading and then two weeks later for a second reading. So the council can't adopt any kind of ordinance on just on a whim. There's yes, a process that is a process. And they that's have what to I wanted through. to yeah. do, see what type of process it was yep. and how to go about the process. Because what I do is I bring entertainers in from out of state. And yeah. these people, when they get here, they don't want to just jump up there at 11 o'clock. They like to be seen and be very, very special. And they want to take the time mm -hmm. and then they want to start at 12 o'clock and you know once you start at 12 o'clock you pan them for an hour session it's, it's hard to run these people out of there within 30 to 45 minutes and the police ain't giving us no leeway they just like at 201 yeah. it's either ticket or, or the ticket well, well i'm not i'm not predicting that the council will make any change yes, I'm, just, I'm saying that we'll, we will take a look at it since you've made the request we'll take a look at what the rules are now and and what what rules you know you you might uh, request to be adjusted and if there's not any changes it may be some type of exception sometimes I mean we don't you don't make exceptions because the the ordinances have to apply uniformly across the board right. or when an ordinance is adopted every every event center follows the same ordinance every bar follows the same ordinance every restaurant follows the same ordinance so unless they're grandfathered in that's a which sometimes happens because all right, of, all right. Yeah. that's why i was asking because yep. like i said when they say you get these licenses you transfer from a um from whatever you are to a bar or a restaurant I'm right like, we don't operate like that we don't be open like that we don't sell food unless people are here so we have to you know generate a crowd to be able to be to do these things so it's, it's complicated on my end and then when we're paying for these licenses we don't you know, fully understand them, and then when we don't have them, it's still another problem. So sure. it's best to have them than to not have them. And yeah, yep. There you go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you for bringing this to our attention, and we will. I'll ask the city manager to follow up um, yes, sir. with that. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Miss Truitt. Um, I'll move down to reports and see if any council members have anything they'd like to report tonight. No report. No report. Uh, just a observation um first of all i watched the one side of the horse king bridge get lifted into place and it's uh it's very uh did that happen today, today? That okay happened today. i didn't was right after that. the meeting yeah okay uh, just one side the other side will probably be tomorrow but uh, i encourage uh you know the rest of the council members if you get a chance go down there and take a look because it's a it's a pretty interesting process and uh it's a pretty historic moment um, and the other thing is, you know, as I look out in the gallery today, I see three black business owners, and, and it's, I'm, I'm very proud of you guys. I really am. Because um, I knew all you guys when you, you didn't have these businesses, and, and I'm just glad that you guys are doing good. Um, one thing that, in, in recognizing that, I've also noticed that we have a chamber of commerce that is here, and they act like these guys don't even exist. We got a downtown tourism board. They act like these guys don't even exist. They provide entertainment to a certain segment of the community, and I feel like they're being ostracized and they don't have any assistance, any help coming from what we have to provide, except for police. And I think that's unfair to the police department to provide the guidance that they need. Um, they're businesses and they got a license, and we need to treat them as such you know, to help them grow the business as we would help Kia sell cars. So that's my report and I thank you for the time. Captain Cavender, I noticed you're out here. Maybe you can shed some light on this. Is there some reasons, can you enlighten us on the, some, some of the natures of the uh, reasons why the police have been so active around this event center? Yes. Okay. If, yep, yes. If you. We're speaking just of Mr. True. Just the event center that's been called out today. Uh, yes. He's correct. He, he's been open for approximately 15 months. Uh, the 15 months that he's been open, there's been uh, upwards of 35 calls to the area of where his location is, primarily due to traffic concerns. 
uh, the streets being shut down, loud music from neighboring um, residences, uh, so on and so forth. There's the the um, incidents that he was discussing, and I believe he said were, were dismissed this this week in court. I'm unfamiliar of, of what happened with that. Um, and since his meeting that he had with Chief Deckmar, Matt Kelsey, myself, and others. Uh, where we specifically laid out the hours of operation when the location was supposed to close. He's been found in violation of that twice since that meeting. Uh, so there is a constant issue over there. Most of the time the issue is coming from the people who live there that are calling and making complaints to the police because of the music, because uh, cars can't get down the street, or just merely for the fact that Mr. Truett refuses to abide by the policies and the ordinances set by this council. Okay, one more question. Can you explain to us why we would have enacted a, an ordinance that shuts businesses like that down at, tw at 2 o'clock in the morning? Absolutely. Prior to 2015, the ordinance was that you stop serving at 1 o'clock, yet you still remain open to 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, it was during that time that we had several bars in LaGrange that were problematic that we were having to exasperate resources every weekend to police just the businesses and it eventually led to a shooting and a murder <coughs> at one of our local businesses here in LaGrange on Hogansville Road. So after that, <coughs> between the police department and the council, the ordinances were changed to where they stopped serving at one and doors are closed by two. And that applies to all businesses that have class B license. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Please allow me to say something. You I, open the door. I, I, I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you a minute. Yeah, please, you, just, minute. just come up to the, yeah. One minute. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you, too. No, no, no. I'm, I'm gonna let Mr. Truett respond. Just yeah, but 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 let's keep let's keep well, everything. Nice. I'm gonna be very yeah. nice yeah. about it. All right. He just said since then I've been cited twice. No, sir, that's not correct. It's only been one time, and that's on the exact night when time went up. So instead of it being two o'clock, it's now three o'clock, and they were sitting oh, the outside time check, the time building check, yeah. at thirty minutes beforehand. And you're talking about when somebody get killed at a, at, a, at, a, at a business seven years ago? Somebody got killed at commotions. Ain't been long, and they still operating. So, and, and they're trying to say that the music, sir, I, I guarantee you I have a petition right now with over 100 signatures before I open this business. Is this going to affect you? Is this going to bother you? I have the only house within 500 feet of the building. And by law, Georgia law says any business operating after the hours of five o'clock owes no one any any type of explanation after five o'clock and, and i've been nice i go to my neighborhood i pick up paper in my neighborhood i take people home in my neighborhood who's drunk i am from district two i still live in district two i walk that neighborhood so when you tell me something that i'm doing wrong and i got and I guarantee you now, I didn't want to do this today. I didn't want to bring 50 people up here to support something I say. I mean, what people say, I'm coming here giving you facts. And now you're talking about traffic? People are parked off the curb. Half of the car is off the curb. I drive tractor trailers. I have a trucking company. I could drive two tractor trailers down that road at one time, me and one of my friends. I guarantee you, whenever there's a thousand cars out there. So, and when you're talking about EMS, they never come through there. They go over the bridges. They go over the right. bridges. We're across the tracks. We're not even listed downtown commercial. As a matter of fact, the city street sweeper stops on the other side of the track. He don't even come across the tracks. <laughs> so you're talking about licensing and everything. I've done everything they asked me to do in the order they asked me to do it. You're talking about licensing when a city official tells me, the NAACP, a city council member, and an advocate of my choice that the police department told them not to give me a business license. And I got it recorded, and I have a witness, and I got a city councilman sitting right here who was in on that meeting. I've done everything they asked. I, they've had meetings about me without me. And everything I do, you, you try to tear it down. Now that is a prime example of tearing us down. You're not helping us. We're not getting met by the city council. Nobody's coming at us at all. It's just like you keep on, you keep on, you keep on. You can't tell me what I did 20 years ago gonna affect me today. I'm tired. The people are tired. If, if, if you're gonna be a dictator, I even, now, 
since he opened up the can of worms. No, we're, no, we're, I we're, emailed yeah. you. Yeah, we're, we're not. We're not. Yeah, you, you and, and I responded I told you to your I email. The I responded, Mr. Trudeau. You're, you're sitting here okay, raising well, your voice. Okay, okay, right, okay, we're not. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. I've given you more than a minute to respond. We're done so with this item. To, so, so, Mr. Truitt, the, the the mayor and council don't enforce the law. I understand. We that. have no enforcement authority. All we do, all we do, all we do is set policy. Who opened okay, the door we for set, the law? I, I understand. And we're done with this conversation. No, we're, no, we're, we're done. Mark, Mark, we're done with this conversation. Okay. We're done. Disrespectful Mr. to the Mr. people. Truitt. If you're a city councilman, you should hear us. Mr. Truitt, we're done with this. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay. Do any council members have anything else they'd like to report tonight? No, sir. Okay. City Manager report, Ms. Kelsey. Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. I have a couple. Uh, the financial statements for March, as well as the payment of bills over $2,000 are attached to your agenda materials. I don't have any particular comments at this time. I am in um, meetings with our department heads going through line by line all of the expenses and revenues. So I look forward to presenting that to y'all uh, in May, probably the second meeting. Um, so that we can make sure that we have Dr. Edmondson there for that during a work session if that meets with y'all's schedule. But um, do we have any questions? If y'all have any questions. Um, any questions about the financials? No. No. Okay. Um, when will you notify? When, do you know what your schedule is going to be for the budgeting? When is that? The, what is the second of May? May. Second of May. That would be. Uh, that afternoon. May the 24th. We normally do it right after our work session, so if that's okay. May 24th. Just, we don't have to do yeah. that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Historically. Right. Is that, does that, May 24th. Does that work for the council? Yeah. Yeah. I believe so. And we would just continue at 11 yes. and just we'll go. Lunch. Sue's actually already ordered lunch, so she's right ahead of me as usual. Okay. Um, Moving forward, Mayor, uh, redistricting, the city has been working with the state of Georgia's reapportionment office uh, basically to address some population shifts that have occurred and were identified in uh, the most recent census. Um, so uh, basically what that is going to require is us to amend our voting uh, district map, which I have a copy of that here behind us and be glad to share that with anybody in the public that wants to come forward. Um, but the council met this morning at work session and wanted to call for a public hearing to get comments on these uh, changes. Basically, District 2 had to gain population, so we had to move territory out of District 1 uh, to provide the one person, one, um, one rule, one person, one vote. Exactly one person, one vote. vote. One person, one vote rule um, so that we can move forward with calling a special election. We hope that we will call for that in May for an election in November. I'd be glad to answer any questions, but at this point, I think it would be. Move for public hearing. Second. I have a motion and second to call for a public hearing on April 26th. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That passes unanimously. Um, this morning, or session, we also talked about some correspondence that we had gotten from the Boys and Girls Club of America, where they had um, removed their charter, their local charter here. Um, council. Uh, they basically made the recommendation this morning that we would move forward to continue funding to the West Georgia STAR program um, until the end of the year and then do a reassessment of the new application for next year to funding. Um, that totals about $62.50 in dollars. Move to continue the funding for this year. Second. I have a motion and second to continue the funding um, with the new, I guess, the, with, the, the, with the new so grantee. Budget, yeah. Budget adjustment yeah. And yeah. We would who's been running the program um, since 20, I think March of 21. Um, so there's really no change in the program. Other than the National Boys and Girls Club is no longer involved. Okay. Any discussion? I'll just say it's, it's budget neutral. It's just a change in name of who that the check is, actually goes to. That's exactly correct, Dr. Glorious. Um, I'd like to make a uh, note that uh, as you advised us this morning, the 
person who was operating the Boys and Club, Girls Club was uh, given notice that it had several violations that they failed to meet and that's why their license or permits were pulled and that the same person uh, that was running it previously is going to be managing it at uh, West uh, uh, Ms. Allen's been running the program she's going to run the program too. over here that we're continuing to give the money to so uh, I want to make sure that's noted okay. Okay. Mr. Mayor I also did some research on that and there were there was no it was just the <clears throat> program was just dropped and so there was no training nothing uh, for the new person to come in so they took the program and kept it going without the knowledge of knowing all the uh, ins and outs of this program so I, I'd like to commend them they've done quite well uh, doing the work they just need some training on all the uh, uh, paperwork that they, do, they need to file for that but the insurance was uh, dropped before they even took the program over. Thanks sir. Okay any more discussion? Oh yeah um, no, uh, no, no, no sir we, yeah yeah. Um, I did receive a copy of the board of directors uh -huh. board members for the uh, Boys and Girls Club and had a chance to go through it and there are some very capable people um, as to whether they had knowledge as to what was going on, I have no idea. But I think this just re reiterates my, my call for vigilance for anyone who sits on any board anywhere. That, you know, we're, we're, we don't have, we didn't assign anyone to these. I don't think we assigned anyone to the Boys and Girls Club. But um, any board member that sits on any board, they need to be vigilant as to what's happening with the program. Um, especially with something as vital as the Boys and Girls Club because like again if that service is so desperately needed in the community and uh, I feel like it could have helped a lot of a lot more younger people and so far as the training um, for for the staff members um, I feel for them but I, I don't think that it's anything that couldn't happen with a phone call to another Boys and Girls Club maybe in a different county, a different region, asking what do I need to do in running this program? And I just don't feel like there was a, it was an honest attempt in that. It was just, uh, you know, we'll take it and we'll take the resources and we'll add it to what we have. And that's all well and fine if you want to do it, but at least make an honest attempt. So that's my discussion on that. Okay. Anyone else have anything they'd like to? Say? Okay. Motion on the floor. Yeah. Oh, we do have a motion on the floor. So, um, motion a second to approve the budget amendment. If you would approve the budget amendment to continue the funding with a different payee, please uplift the right hand. Okay. And if you would oppose the motion, please uplift the right hand. Okay. So, the motion will pass three to two. Okay. Um, okay, Ms. Kelsey. And finally, Mr. Chair, uh, we've had some interest in property owned by the city at 1973 Greenville Road. It's about a 15-acre track. Staff would recommend the council to declare this property surplus uh, as we have no intent use of that property uh, and set a minimum bid of $1 million. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion a second to declare the real property surplus <clears throat> with a minimum bid of $1 million and we would take bids on it. Any discussion? How, how long does that process take place um, like once you make an announcement in the newspaper I guess is the way you do it and how do you set a limit <laughs> on how long it be open before As from tonight's time we'll be able to accomplish it within uh, four to six weeks to have the bid opening okay. to open the bid or does it stay open that long People will have that seal to bid. submit a bid. And oh, okay. We generally have them open the morning of a council meeting. Okay. Okay. Any, uh, have a motion, a second. Any discussion? Any more discussion? All in favor of declaring the property surplus, say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. That passes unanimously. Okay. And completes our report. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Kelsey. Yes, sir. Um, under resolutions, I have a resolution recertifying LaGrange as a city of ethics. Um, attached to your agenda material is a um, resolution 
Um, the city of, has been a certified city of ethics for a number of years, I think eight years. You mentioned earlier today, Mayor. Uh, staff would uh, recommend that you approve this resolution. Make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any discussion? I, I would like to have just a moment yep. of discussion. I, I feel like when we if we move to approve this, I think we all need to uh, remember that when we're uh, divvying out the taxpayers' money that they worked hard for, that we do our very best to make sure that it's spent correctly and properly. From the, that, I think that's a very important part of our uh, duties is that we we make sure every dollar spent the way it should be spent going forward and I'd like to piggyback on that and not I only do we all agree oh yeah we all agree with that that's why we're here I just want to make sure that we're not throwing good money after bad and I know that programs do fail <clears throat> but when we're talking about the youth I'm especially hard on, you know, the Board of Education and any sort of entity that deals with youth because failure for youth in my community either means jail or death. That's failure. And so I take it very serious. That's all. Okay. So we have the resolution recertifying the city as a city of ethics under the GMA program. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That passes unanimously. We also have a resolution accepting certain streets in Cross Vine Village subdivision. As you heard this morning, the developers of Cross Vine subdivision are looking to extend two streets and add a new street in the old River Mill uh, development, Freshwater Court, Sweetwood Court, and Windstream Drive. They filed a subdivision plan and the action item tonight with staff's recommendation is to accept the streets. Um, subject to any additional required water and sewer tests and also staff approval of the deed, the warrant, the road warranty, and uh, the required letter of credit. Move or approve? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That passes unanimously. Okay, we will move on to first reading of ordinances, and I have an ordinance modifying the industrial parking ratio requirements. An ordinance of the Mayor Council of the City of the Grange to amend the zoning ordinance of the city so as to modify the minimum parking table requirements for industrial and agricultural uses to repeal conflicting ordinances to provide for separability and fixing the date for other purposes. And I have an ordinance naming certain streets in Cross Vine Village subdivision. An ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of the Grange to amend the code so as to name certain streets in Cross Vine Village subdivision to repeal conflicting ordinances to fix an effective date and for purposes. We'll move on to second reading of ordinances. I have an ordinance rezoning property located at 304 Broad Street from TNMX to DTMX. An ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of the Grange to amend the zoning map and ordinances of the city so as to reclassify the use zone of real estate located on Broad Street and owned by. Evelyn A. Mansour to repeal conflicting ordinances to fix an effective date and for other purposes. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and second to approve. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. That passes unanimously. We also have an ordinance rezoning property in the 800 block of New Franklin Road from TNR and SDMH to CRMX. An ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of the Grange to amend the zoning map and ordinances of the city so as to reclassify the use of real estate located on New Franklin Road and owned by MK Property Management Group LLC to repeal conflicting ordinances to fix an effective date and for other purposes. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That passes unanimously. We have an ordinance annexing property located at 1350 Lafayette Parkway. An ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of the Grange to annex to the city contiguous real property owned by Bees Meat Market LLC located on Lafayette Parkway to repeal conflicting ordinances to fix the effect of date and for other purposes. What a motion to approve. Thank you. Have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. That passes unanimously. And then lastly, we have an ordinance zoning property located at 1350 Lafayette Parkway from Troop County, GC to CRMX. 
an ordinance of the mayor and council of the city of the Grange to amend the zoning map and ordinance of the, of the city so as to classify the use of real estate to be annexed in the city located on Lafayette Parkway and owned by B's Meat Market LLC to repeal conflict ordinances to make some effective data for other purposes. Make a motion to approve. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion and a second to approve the ordinance. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? No. That passes unanimously. Ms. Venshore, would you like to close us? Yes, sir. Um, like Councilman um, Gaskin mentioned, the good I'm, news oh, for I'm tonight. Oh, your thunder. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Sorry. It's okay. Um, we, we moved the base structure and one side of the King Bridge into the Mulberry Street Cemetery, and we're expecting the other side to go up tomorrow. Is that correct? That's tomorrow. And we're very excited about the progress. Um, we're also very excited and very proud to let you know about our youth council. They raised nearly $1,200 for Pat's Community Garden in Calumet. The youth council held a fun run this past Saturday, and it was a terrific turnout. And um, Ms. Pat's family members came out, Calumet members came out. They're very, very proud of that homegrown um, community event that they did. We Please let them know we appreciate their work, youth council. We stand adjourned.